I studied history of mathematics, I think, for about 20 years. Uh, I graduated from math department. Then I showed interest in the history of mathematics, thanks to Joseph Needham, who was a professor at Cambridge University uh, in UK. He started his uh, project, gigantic project, on history and civilization in China. Uh, actually, that whole project is devoted to answer one question, uh, the so-called Needham puzzle. Why China, uh, before the 1400, uh, led Europe for so many things, uh, particularly for science and technology? Uh, he asked himself why, you now after 1400, uh, China uh, lagged behind Europe. There's no so-called scientific revolution. I was inspired by his book, then tried to study uh, history of mathematics. Some of my colleagues, you know, they did not enjoy the uh, history part, tell the different number of systems. But I find that uh, part is most interesting. Uh, I'll give you one example, say the decimal place value system. Now students take that for granted. Say we know use 10 digits, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 9. Then put, then, uh, put these 10 digits in different places, then we can write uh, a number as big as you wish or a number as small as you want. Uh, they just take these for granted. Actually, the human being took uh, more than uh, thousands of years to develop this uh, fantastic system. Uh, different cultures have a different uh, numeration system. Say, Babylonia, they have 60 basis system. Uh, Maya, they have 20 basis systems. Uh, there's a system, mm, some systems are still uh, survive. Say, 60 basis system, we still use. Say, one hour uh, equal to 60 minutes, uh, one minute equal to 60 seconds. Then, this, is, has, this system has great uh, advantage uh, for astronomy. For 20 basis, now we do not use them much. Um, but now uh, we use the most often is the decimal place value system. Uh, when I lecture this part, actually I tell students uh, how uh, Egyptians developed their the own systems, then uh, Romans has their uh, Roman numerals. Then Chinese had Chinese uh, numeration systems, and give student background, historic background. Then uh, they looks um, very enjoy uh, this class and also had a better understanding uh, history and mathematics. Lots of people think mathematics is very dry. Uh, dry stuff is very you know, hard to understand, has uh, no connection with the real world. Uh, actually, if you take history approach, you can find out real problems provide equations for mathematicians. Then they try to find ways to solve them. Um, I was interested in history of mathematics, as I said before, uh, was inspired by Joseph Needham, and also later on was um, uh, was now inspired by the nature of this subject. It's a very interesting subject. Uh, historian of mathematics argued you now who had uh, who had invented what first. Um, actually, the f two or three generations before uh, historian the debate you know, who uh, invented what first. You now try to get uh, uh, credit. Now historians they do not take that approach. Usually they, they try to uh, find out what was the motive of uh, past mathematicians uh, for solving specific problem. What was the method they used and what was the uh, results they get. Uh, they do not you know, try to answer questions of who solved what first. Um, Now we we very 
difficult to answer who get what first. I'll give you one example, say the Pythagorean theorem. Now, so-called Pythagorean theorem was named after a Greek uh, philosopher of uh, nature, uh, Pythagoras, um, named after him. But if you check the tablets uh, from the Babylonian, say, 5,000 years ago, uh, on the tablets you can find out the, the diagrams. That diagram clearly shows uh, how Babylonian knew the Pythagorean theorem. If you check the original documents uh, in, in Chinese, you can argue, say, on the, uh, on the uh, surviving documents, uh, at least 2,500 years ago, uh, the ancient Chinese knew the Pythagorean theorem. They have different terms. They call it Gogu Ding Li. Uh, it's very hard to answer you know, who we invented what first. And also, you know, a long time ago, the, the people the, you know, did not have the custom to provide so-called primary uh, evidence. They don't want to you know, save that for credit. Not like you know, nowadays, most petitions, they try to preserve you know, every sheet of manuscript they the, the wrote to archive the things.